Thanks for checking out this video. I hope it's encouraging to you. I hope it helps you grow in your relationship with the Lord. If you're in the Tulsa area, we would love to have you join us at Christian Chapel so that you could not only grow in your knowledge, but you could grow in your relationships in experiencing God together. If you live in another part of the world, I wanna encourage you to take all you can from this resource, but also plug into a community of believers where you live. God's created us not only to know about him, but to experience him together. And that's done best in the context of the local church. Hope this blesses you, hope you enjoy it, and I hope God speaks to you through it. Well, good morning. My name is Amy. I'm the children's pastor here at Christian Chapel. I'm really glad to join you today. Um, pastor Chris is out of town visiting his family for Thanksgiving, and so he asked me to preach today to you guys. He is actually preaching at his brother's church this morning, so he didn't really get much of a break as far as like sermons, but um, I think he's enjoying the time with his family. Um, I did joke with him a little bit that so he's not here and he's not even watching this morning, so I'm kind of free to do whatever I want. And uh, I don't know, I think we probably are still going to have it on the podcast later, so I should probably behave. Um, so I, I'll, I promise I, I will behave today. But um, no, I'm really excited to be here, and uh, your kids are still in wonderful hands this morning while I'm up here. Um, I, Pastor Chris last week started a series on hills and valleys, and just talking about that God is with us in our great times, and he's with us in our terrible times, and he promises peace in the midst of all that. And I kind of wanted to explore some more about the idea of peace today, and I want to focus on that peace that Jesus gives us. And I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Um, how many of you hosted Thanksgiving in your home today, or this past weekend? Anyone host? Okay, so those of you who are hosters, you know that, that Thanksgiving's not really a very peaceful time. Um, it can't, it's not a very peaceful holiday when you're hosting and you're preparing all the meals and you're inviting all the guests to come in. Maybe you had inflatable mattresses all over your house. I'm not sure. Um, but I think about Thanksgiving and Christmas and I think about we all have this picture of a peaceful holiday, kind of that silent night, that sleep in heavenly peace, that idea. And, and really it's kind of, it's kind of not, um, it's not a reality what we experience in our lives. Now, I'm a huge fan of Christmas movies, and in fact, I'm just a huge fan of Christmas. We've had our tree up since middle of November, and yeah, like November 10th, I think, is when we put it up. It's a record for the earliest we've ever done it. Usually we do like November 15th, but we're like, hey, we have a free Saturday, let's put up the tree. Our middle kid is kind of angry about it. He's like, it's not Christmas yet. I'm like, why are you being such a, a Grinch? Just enjoy it. So anyway, he says December 1st. So we have like five more days before he's finally going to be okay with Christmas. But around our house, it's been Christmas for a while. Um, but when I think about, I think about Christmas and the idea of, um, what it really looks like in our homes. I think about Home Alone. It's an old movie, I know. But if, you, if you've seen it before, the very beginning, when the policeman and the pizza guy are standing there and everyone's running back and forth trying to pack and, and they can't even get anyone's attention because they're just running around trying to do things. Or this one's not, not as popular for a movie, but Christmas with the Cranks. Has anyone ever seen that one? And it's got Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis and they decide at the last minute they're going to throw a Christmas Eve party. It's hilarious. But all of the things she's doing trying to get this last minute party prepared and that is a, that is the idea we can all kind of agree that that peaceful holiday doesn't really doesn't really fit in with our world but let's be honest that peace is really elusive all year round and so if you know if you know me so I used to before I was a children's pastor I was an elementary music teacher and I have three kids that are young and now I'm a children's pastor and there's no peace in any of those professions really. There's nothing peaceful about any of that. If you come here on a Sunday night when we have the kids home group, or if you have ever helped at mega camp or kids camp, you know that peace is really nowhere on the radar at all. And as we've experienced growth in our children's ministry, we found that more kids does not equal more peace. And this doesn't. And you probably see that in your own home and probably in your own life. We all, we, we see like a lot of more of anything doesn't really equal more peace. And so, and so we can all in our, look at our own lives and, and see how we don't really have much peace in our day to day workings in our lives. And yet, Jesus talks a lot about peace. Now, the main biblical text that we'll be looking at today is in the Gospel of John, and it's chapters 
13 through 17. I'm not going to read all of that, so it would take forever. Um, But that portion of Scripture is known as Jesus' farewell discourse. And it happens right at the end of the Last Supper. And so Jesus is getting ready to give his life on the cross. And at this time, he's speaking to his disciples. And those chapters are rich with some wonderful things that he tells the men that he has walked so closely with for those those times of his ministry. And I encourage you sometime to read those chapters because there are so many great things that he's sharing with his disciples, that close-knit group that he had with them those three years, three and a half years of his ministry. Um, we could do an entire sermon series on Jesus' farewell discourse. But I want to focus on a few key points in that in the passages there. At, towards the end of John chapter 13 and the beginning of John chapter 14, Jesus tells his disciples that he's getting ready to leave them. Now let's put ourselves in the disciples' shoes for just a minute. So these men have traveled with Jesus for three and a half years. They have seen him do amazing miracles. They have seen him speak words like no one else has ever spoken with such power and authority. And they have been around someone who is honestly, really, and truly perfect. Now this is the only time in the history of the world where hero worship was deserved. And so these men were around this perfect, perfect person who had an answer for everything and had a love like no one else, who never made any mistakes. And so the news that he's getting ready to leave them, this had to be devastating to them. Probably the worst news they had ever experienced up to this point in their lives. And so Jesus tells them this, and then he promises them peace. So let's look at John 14, 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Jesus is promising peace to his disciples. In the midst of terrifying and uncertain times in their lives, he is promising them peace. And the peace that he gives is not like anything that the world gives or is even capable of giving to us. See, the world's standpoint, their definition of peace is the absence of strife, anxiety, the absence of disturbances. The world portrays portrays peace as some sort of utopia, perfect existence that we experience. And Jesus' promise of peace is different. His promise of peace is not a promise of perfection. It's not that Norman Rockwell picture of everyone just perfectly sitting around the table eating their Thanksgiving or Christmas meal. It's not that Instagram post with just the right filters to make everyone look perfect. That's not what the peace is that Jesus brings us. See, the world's peace tells us it's the absence of strife and anxiety and disturbances. Jesus' peace is what he gives us in the midst of those things. He gives us that peace in the midst of the anxiety and the strife and the disturbances. And his peace is so much deeper and more realistic than the peace that the world tries to offer us. Now, we have to acknowledge that there are two different kinds of peace that I'm talking about this morning. So we're talking about when Jesus first came and he gave his life for us, his goal was for us to have peace with God. And so we're talking about that eternal, forever peace with God, a perfect relationship with him. And that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross. And yet at the same time, Jesus says, I'm going to give you peace here and now. I'm going to give you peace here and now. And that's what the Holy Spirit gives us. He gives us that peace. We have to remember that that peace here and now is dependent on the peace that we have forever because of what God, because what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so we have this eternal security of peace with God forever. So we know that one day everything's going to be perfectly peaceful. Everything's going to be great. Jesus comes and he destroys evil once and for all with his second coming. And if you're older than six or seven years old, you know that life is not perfect. And yet Jesus' promise of peace here still stands. And Jesus addresses this tension we have, living and experiencing God's peace in our salvation, while still navigating life in a fallen and a sinful world. So let's go back again to Jesus' farewell discourse. Let's look at John 16, 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus knows that his disciples are going to continue to have troubles in their lives. And he knows that us coming after them are going to continue to have trouble in our life. And so when he says heart, he's saying, take courage. Take courage, have courage. Because even though there are troubles that are going to come your way, we have confidence that Jesus has overcome the enemy. 
When he came and he lived and he died and he rose again, he overcame that. And so our confidence, our peace rests there and not in the things that are going on around us. Now, we can acknowledge that peace is really easy to experience when things are going great. So I told you I have three kids and they go to school. I go to public school. And so when I'm home by myself and they're not there and I'm just kind of doing whatever I want, whenever I want, and I have, I don't really have a, a deadline to get stuff done. It's really peaceful around my house. And I can just kind of feel just really close to God and just peaceful. Uh, when I'm at work and I, maybe I close my door and I'm working on a sermon or something, it is so easy to feel peaceful. It's not so easy when I'm making dinner, going through the bills, folding the laundry, making a grocery list, going through kids' backpacks, and all at the same time, I have three kids standing there trying to talk to me at the exact same time. Now, let's just talk about that for a second. If you have more than one kid, why is that, that they all think they can talk to us at the same time? I don't understand. It's like they think I have three ears that hear independent of one another. It's just, it's a mystery of life I'm never going to understand. But that just adds to that level where you just, you don't really feel so peaceful when you have three kids trying to tell you something at the same time. And I don't like, can you hear your brothers talking to me at the same, I don't know. I don't think I'm ever going to understand it. But this is one of those moments where you just don't feel that peace in your soul and in your heart. And the reality is that most of the time our moments are going to be more like that. And those quiet, peaceful moments when we're lying on the beach on a vacation, those are few and far between. So how is it that we still experience that peace that God promises us while still navigating life and our busy, crazy lives that we have? See, we have to remember that our peace doesn't depend on those things. And our peace does not rest in what's going on around us. Our peace should be above that and just kind of like a calm water that goes over the top of it. Um, There's a a theologian by the name of Donald Miller. He's the former president of the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. And he wrote on this topic of peace. I really like what he says here. He says, When Jesus speaks, therefore, of peace, it is not the peace of unruffled days, but the inner confidence of the warrior who is weary, thirsty, outnumbered, and wounded, but who fights bravely on, confident of the outcome, assured of victory. We are saved not from trouble. We are saved in trouble. I'm going to read that last sentence one more time. We are saved not from trouble. We are saved in trouble. And I love that idea. And it reminds me of the well-known Bible verse we all know that says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we are still experiencing troubles, while we are still dealing with anxiety, while we are still going through difficult situations, Jesus gives us peace. It's just like Jesus to give us things that we don't deserve or have earned or anything like that. But he gives us that peace. It's a gift that he promises to us. And remember that the coming of the Holy Spirit in our lives is what um, is what, what enables us to experience his peace. So peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. And so that means that as we allow the Holy Spirit access to our hearts, he's going to grow that peace in our hearts. And we can just, as we surrender to him, he stirs that peace up in our hearts and it grows and it comes out. And that's how we experience the peace. And none of that depends on what's going on around us. But it depends on when we come, we let the Holy Spirit in and we surrender to him. We let him grow that peace and we let him have access to our hearts And it's really important for us to know that even though peace is a gift that is offered to us, we have a choice of whether or not we're going to accept that gift. Just like any time you get a gift, you have a choice of whether or not you're going to accept the gift. And remember in John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So he's saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. So we have a choice there of what we're going to decide to do. And again, in Colossians, Paul states a similar idea. Colossians 3.15, he says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Now, both of these verses indicate that we have a choice of whether or not we're going to let peace reign in our hearts, whether or not we're going to choose to let the peace of God in, whether or not we're going to surrender the temptation to choose worry and fear and stress and anxiety over peace. We have a choice, but it's not something that we have to manufacture on our, on our own. Something that we just have to surrender and let Jesus 
fill us with that peace. Let the Holy Spirit come and grow that peace in our hearts. Now, I know I'm not bringing you very much new information today. Peace in the midst of struggles. We all know that. We know that in our heads. But we need to get that in our hearts, in a place where the Holy Spirit can reach us. So that only comes when we spend time in his presence because true peace is only found in the presence of Jesus. We let the Holy Spirit come in and let that peace so, so deep into our hearts. And so we're going to do that today. And I'm going to invite the band to come back up again. And, and last week in Chris's sermon, he talked about how um, he said, I can explain peace to you all day, but you need to experience peace. And so today I'm going to give us a chance to experience only the peace that the Holy Spirit can give us. And so we're going to spend some time today just worshiping and experiencing that peace that Jesus brings us. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to, the band's going to come up and they're going to lead us in a song. And I just want to encourage you to just spend some time. We have plenty of time this morning. Just spend some time letting the Holy Spirit speak to you. And let him just begin to grow that peace in your heart. And after they, they worship, lead us in a song, I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to allow you a chance to respond to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you this morning. But if you'll go ahead and stand with me, and I want to pray with you before they lead us in a song. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your presence. We thank you that you came to give us peace and that you came and you promised peace to us here. And I pray right now that your peace would just flood this place, that your Holy Spirit would just begin to stir up peace in our hearts. I pray for those who especially need to feel your peace today, that they would experience it in ways they never have before. And God, we just surrender this time to you. We surrender our hearts to you. We ask that you would just come in today and that your Holy Spirit would just give us a deep, deep peace. Thanks for watching this message. You can view more messages and watch live online on Sundays at ChristianChapel.com. Have a great week.